Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about colonization, terraforming and potentially the future of humanity. But we're actually not going to be talking about Mars, even though I'm kind of showing it to you right now. We're going to be talking about the planet that we really need to focus on colonizing and from the title you probably know what this planet is. Let's talk about this in more detail and welcome to What The Math. So first of all, let's actually start by briefly discussing why Mars is not going to be terraformed probably ever. Now obviously we can colonize it, we can create quite a large um, underground or even above ground colony on Mars and we can create various ways of sustaining humanity here for quite a long time. But it's just simply not terraformable for one very very simple scientific reason gravity. It just doesn't have enough surface gravity. It needs more surface gravity to permanently hold on things like oxygen, and without oxygen you can't just have terraformed world. For this reason, unfortunately, Mars is going to be axed from the potential places where humanity can survive for the next billion or several billion years. If there's no oxygen, well, then you're gonna have to live inside big uh, domed cities, and that's just not terraforming. But on the other hand, as you can probably tell from this title, there is a planet in our solar system that is totally capable of supporting Earth-like atmosphere. And that planet, of course, is Venus. This is the planet that we really need to consider colonizing or basically finding a way to colonize because it is probably the only object in our solar system right now that we could potentially call a new home in the next few um, hundreds of years. Now, let's actually discuss a little bit more about the problems with Venus first and in this multi-part video I'm going to discuss some of the possible solutions we can actually uh, try to realize. So first of all, what are the problems with Venus and why is it still not colonizable? The biggest problem of course is ridiculously high temperature. The temperature here is close to about 480 degrees Celsius, uh, which of course is something that would melt most of the materials we would bring here, including things like plastics and even lead. Now, on the other hand, uh, this high temperature could also potentially serve as a kind of a catalyst for various chemical reactions that would get initialized here to try to change the atmosphere. And that's the next uh, problem with Venus, the atmosphere. It's actually very, very Earth-like, except for one part. The vast majority of atmospheric pressure on Venus comes from um, huge amounts of CO2. And this is what's creating so much temperature, it's the incredibly powerful greenhouse effect. So if we actually hypothetically remove all of the CO2 from the atmosphere, this will actually be a very, very comfortable, possibly around three atmospheres in pressure, atmosphere very similar to one on Earth with just a little bit less oxygen that we can then try to create. So atmospheric pressure comes from CO2 and CO2 can definitely be removed. There's also a few other problems in the atmosphere of Venus and one of them is um, huge amounts of um, sulfur dioxide which can potentially be corrosive and deadly. And back in uh, 1961, Carl Sagan actually proposed that if we genetically modify bacteria and send it to Venus and basically keep it in the atmosphere to try to break down carbon dioxide, we could potentially colonize this uh, planet in under a decade. However, then we discovered that it wasn't just carbon dioxide here, it's also very, very acidic uh, sulfur dioxide-like components, which would very likely kill most of the bacteria, but not all of the bacteria. And we'll talk about which kind of bacteria could survive here in a few uh, minutes. Now, another problem is in regards to the rotation of Venus, and we'll actually talk about this in one of the future videos. Uh, there's also the problem of not having any magnetosphere, and uh, that's also another problem we'll be solving in a future video. And finally, the fact that we're kind of close to the sun means that we actually receive um, at least a double of 
and actually even more than double of uh, solar energy that can both be a blessing and also a curse because obviously we'll have to cool down this planet a lot more. So in today's video, we're actually going to only focus on various techniques that we can use to try to essentially change the atmosphere of Venus. And let's uh, start with the one proposed by Carl Sagan, and that's adding some kind of a genetically modified bacteria to try to essentially reduce the um, atmosphere here and change it from 91 atmospheres like right now to down to about three atmospheres by removing the entire carbon dioxide deposits. Now, this could be done with uh, genetically modified bacteria and also various uh, animal-like or plant-like life that could potentially survive in super hot and super acidic temperatures. Right now, we only know of some um, extremophiles that could actually survive in very hot conditions, but even for them, this would be a little bit too extreme. So having extremophiles or basically bacteria that can survive in very very hot very acidic conditions that could potentially survive here but even for them uh, 480 degrees celsius and super acidic conditions is maybe a little bit too much for example uh, the bacteria that can survive the highest temperature right now uh, near the hydrothermal vents um, under the ocean is a bacteria known as a pure lobus fumari but the temperature it can usually survive is about 120 degrees celsius uh, there's a lot of other bacteria that can survive various conditions, so for example, super high radiation and so on. But overall, nothing is ready for these extreme conditions just yet. So we need to either wait and find something more extreme or possibly genetically modify them until they can actually sustain uh, and live in super hot and super, super acidic conditions on Venus. And then they can help us get rid of the CO2. The alternative here is actually uh, something that was proposed by British scientist Paul Birch, and he basically said that, well, listen, if we take um, a lot of hydrogen, like, for example, if we were to kind of somehow find a way to transfer hydrogen from the atmosphere of Jupiter, that's right there, and if we essentially were to transfer all of this hydrogen from here and then put it on Venus, or basically not just put it, but bombard Venus with that hydrogen, we could actually completely reduce the at atmosphere here and turn it uh, into a relatively habitable planet. Uh, so using hydrogen bombardment, you can actually pretty much turn everything here into graphite, which is a type of carbon, and also water, which is something that we definitely need to survive. So hypothetically, by bombarding Venus with hydrogen, you can actually create a uh, somewhat sustainable and actually somewhat wonderful looking world with really interesting Earth-like conditions already. Uh, a lot of carbon on the surface, a lot of water, and quite a large amount of material needed for life to live here, including for plants, of course. So a lot of carbon here can definitely be used by plants. And about 80% of the surface of Venus would actually be covered by water if we were to somehow do this. Now, obviously, the difficult part here is getting this hydrogen, delivering it here, and basically bombarding Venus with it. We don't really have that kind of technology just yet. But once we do, then sky's the limit. Uh, alternatively, of course, you could maybe find some sort of... Um, asteroid and potentially asteroid that actually has a lot of hydrogen in it and essentially what you could do is launch it so that it basically collides with venus and delivers a lot of material that way now it could also potentially be used to remove um, atmosphere from venus as a matter of fact you could if you could somehow collide about thousand objects with venus you could remove most of the excess of um, atmosphere. But even a large rock, like for example, um, rock the size of uh, Maki Maki here at 700 kilometers in radius, would only strip Venus of about 1% of its atmosphere. That's just not enough. We would need a lot of these rocks for Venus to lose most of its atmosphere. Uh, so bombardment is a possibility, but a very expensive one and also would require quite a lot of new technology for redirect, uh, redirecting uh, asteroids from the asteroid belt to Venus. 
And lastly, uh, one of the other ideas uh, comes from the paper no, uh, known as The Stability of Climate on Venus um, that was written back in 96. And this was by uh, Mark uh, Bollock and David uh, Greenspoon from University of Colorado at Boulder. And basically they proposed that, well, you could also bombard the atmosphere of Venus with other things, like for example, refined magnesium and calcium. And this would actually, ooh, I don't know what happened to my Venus. I think it just suddenly got too hot. Um, this could actually change Venus uh, for the better as well, reducing quite a large amount of um, atmospheric uh, carbon dioxide into rocks, essentially, uh, solidifying them into calcium deposits and leaving them on the surface as tiny pebbles. And in this case, you could actually even create factories on the surface of Venus that would basically um, pour out this calcium from inside the ground and uh, use calcium from Venus to reduce its own atmosphere. But unfortunately, there's just not enough calcium and magnesium inside, so we would still need to deliver some of this uh, by essentially colliding asteroids with Venus. So we're back to the same problem. We need to find a way to redirect asteroids. Now, before we can actually successfully redirect even a small asteroid, this is a bit of a science fiction realm. But uh, genetically modified bacteria and bacteria that could reduce carbon dioxide and basically produce um, atmosphere that's a lot more habitable for humans uh, by essentially living on the surface of Venus, surviving in high acidic conditions, and also converting CO2 into essentially oxygen and potentially some other materials. This is something that we could definitely create in the lab today. We just need a little bit more time and research to try to develop these bacteria. Now, all in all, uh, this is actually a good start for humanity to try to terraform planets, and I think Venus is a much, much better candidate than Mars. On the other hand, Venus also um, has about 90% of Earth gravity, so the actual surface gravity here is very similar to the one on Earth. It's about 90%. And for this reason, it's actually capable of sustaining long-term atmosphere without losing it. So that's really, really important for terraforming planets. Now, in the next video, we're actually going to discuss some of the other problems and issues in colonizing Venus. But for now, that's actually all I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about the atmosphere first. And really, the best solution, I think, is the bacteria that can, we can definitely create in the next few decades. And if we can actually make bacteria that can do this on Venus, we can then potentially introduce a much milder version, the one we can actually control easier, to try to reduce the CO2 level on Earth as well, because this would basically help us uh, find a solution to the ongoing problem of increasing carbon dioxide. Currently, the levels of carbon dioxide are already above 400, and they have been increasing higher and higher every year. And reducing carbon dioxide is super important. And if we can find bacteria to do this for us and do it quick, well, that's something we can then use on Venus. So that's kind of all for now. In the next part, we're going to discuss a few more techniques for solving some of the other problems. But for now, that's all I wanted to talk about because it's actually a very complex idea with quite a lot of scientific discoveries, but also quite a lot of science fiction behind it. Anyway, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Thank you so much for watching. Space out. And as always, Bye-bye.